because of the way that the market, how market works of, of the 10 to 12 billion that trades uh, every year in the past three to four years, only core assets have traded. And so we've, this benchmark of core assets has been used to actually rate the 100 or 150 billion of office assets that are on anybody's balance sheet. But we all know that on those balance sheets there are assets that can't trade. As a matter of fact, we believe that last year about 3 billion of transactions have been pulled from the market because of, of, of the gap in between uh, uh, the buyers and the sellers. So. Um, uh, we, what, you know, those yields, uh, you know, should go up, uh, and sometimes extremely significantly. Um, there is one asset class that I think has done that this year. It's industrial. It's uh, a retail warehouse where you'd seen huge uh, cap rate compression in in, in the last uh, in, in, in the year 2000s, from literally eight to nine. By the way, same thing for secondary retail, uh, which our company bought at eight to nine and we're selling now at five. The difference is that for industrial, which is a specialist uh, asset class, we're now back, in spite of the low interest rate environment, we're now back to yields uh, that, in my view, reflect the inherent risk of managing such portfolios. My, my view is that the uh, office market, because Amanda and I were having a side conversations, we feel that the averages are sort of meaningless. Uh, because frankly, uh, you know, you can ask yourself, why, why are we still in the business where our cap rates are really low and interest rates cannot go lower? And so if anything, there's probably a, a risk that, you know, further down the road, we're going to have to face some sort of value adjustment. And I think the reason we're continuing in, to be in this business is that averages don't mean much. And so, for instance, uh, you know, we feel we can, you know, make significant capital gains, you know, playing some places of some segments of the market. I think, in my view, the key takeaway for France on the opportunistic side is that there will be opportunities, but I don't think it's a directional bet. I don't think we're in 2000 where anybody will make or will lose money. I think we're back to basics where we look at each and every asset, each and every sub-market. Talk about the greater Paris area, 52 million square meter. It doesn't mean anything. What markets are we talking? There's 20 markets within that market. So I think this is very much an operator's market with a liquid uh, tenant market. And that if you're selective, you're, you're going to be able to make money. I would be very concerned. I think there's one question in the preparation about where is the bubble. Uh, my view is probably it's the core bubble. It's this one-sided direction that every, you know, everybody wants to do core in, in a potentially cap rate uh, 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 you know, expansion environment in 2015 or 16. Uh, I think to me this is the key. Uh, this is what I want to stay away from, personally. So, ju just to mention uh, so something interesting this year is uh, so one or two figures about logistic uh, sales, because yeah. we didn't mention anything on that. And it's, it's really interesting because uh, it, it's a market, uh, it was a very speculative market in the past, in the recent, uh, let's say, three or four years. Uh, and if we look at who, uh, who were the logistic investors this year, uh, it's more or less uh, not far from value at all opportunistic. So, which means a big, big uh, decrease on on values on this uh, on this sector, uh, with a yield coming from probably 6.5 uh, four years ago or five years ago up to nine or more uh, this year. Uh, and if we look at the investment volume, it's more or less the same, it will be the same as last year, so it's not far from a billion euro invest in logistics, uh, especially through portfolios. And uh, I think it's, it's a big question on that, on that sector because uh, building a, an investment strategy on, on logistics uh, as, as an investor should now include really uh, an opportunistic uh, uh, strategy, uh, and I think it could it should continue because uh, this sector has not si shown a lot of uh, increasing value terms uh, in the in the in the past. Uh, we are in front of uh, lease duration with uh, with with the tenant, and it's always the same game. So after six months, uh, six years uh, fixed term, you have to renegotiate and renegotiate, and there is no rental growth on that. Uh, so that, f from my point of view, I think it will be it will not be the end of this uh, activity, of course, investment activity, but it has to be probably total review in term of uh, in term of economics and, and and big figures. 
we didn't touch on that, but in France, I see, I see, I'm very optimistic for the hotel business because of the you know, fundamental demographics. We're very optimistic about exceptional residential, and by exceptional, I mean location. So anything that's close to the water, anything that's got some leisure component, uh, you know, big mountain destinations, international destinations, Paris. I think the fundamentals are really uh, interesting. And as far as office is concerned, I think the key is obviously location, public transportation, but be sure you buy something that makes a difference. What the office market is dying of right now, in my view, is uh, how comparable all the assets are, how uneventful they are, how boring they are. But if you do, if you do, and I think there's an example from Carly, frankly, uh, who's, who's leased a sort of inside Paris city limits, ill-located asset, but with an exceptional architecture, and I think they're doing pretty well on the leasing side there, they are bringing an asset to the market that's different. So, you know, don't use all the square meters, all the, you know, the, the square meters you can use uh, as per the zoning plan. Go for quality, and I think you'll do well.